G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here, time for a mad scientist video and today we have a special treat what we have is some 17th century meteorological instrumentation and some 18th century meteorological woo I think if we begin with the Galileo thermometer which measures temperatures from 18 degrees Celsius in two degree increments showing 24 degrees at the moment and this one goes all the way up to 30 degrees and the best explanation I can give to you as to how this thing works is probably if I read the box that it came in and being a little bit of a pack rat yes I do in fact still have the box which brought this device safely halfway around the world here's the ray manufactured after the idea of Galileo Galilei 1564 to 1642 so this is a 17th century instrument searching for exact measurement temperature measurements the brilliant Galileo Galilei discovered this fascinating method in liquid a solid body with the same weight and size is compelled to go down as the temperature rises on the other hand the solid body goes up in the liquid if the temperature falls the glass balls differ in weight and considering the density of the liquid you are guaranteed that the lowest of the floating balls in the upper part of the cylinder indicates the right temperature the production of this instrument is extremely complicated each ball is calibrated to exactly two-fifths of a degree celsius two glass balls differ in weight by only three one-hundredths of a gram the liquid in the cylinder is free of CF2 gases, almost inflammable, neither poisonous, nor does it cause any vapour or gas injurious to health. Avoid continuous direct sunshine. As far as I know, it is a hydrocarbon, pretty similar to the jet fuel that they use at extremely high altitude in aircraft like the now grounded. Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. So anyway, that is a 17th century scientific instrument which actually works. Now, let's move on to Admiral Fitzroy's storm glass. Because, as the luck would have it, we've got one of them as well including the box that it came in and I've even got a textbook description of how to make one of them and an hypothesis as to how they might work Fitzroy's storm glass constantly evolving crystals history the storm glass was developed by Robert Fitzroy captain of the HMS Beagle during his famous voyage with Charles Darwin during the historic voyage Fitzroy carefully documented how the storm glass would predict the weather Later in life, Fitzroy was appointed chief of the newly formed British Meteorological Office in 1859. Violent storms struck the British Isles. In response, the British Crown distributed storm glasses, then known as Fitzroy's storm barometers, to many small fishing communities around the British Isles that were to be consulted by ships at port before setting sail. Each storm glass included the instructions below. Large flakes through the liquid equals cloud in temperate seasons or snowy if cold. Threads near the top equals warning or windy. Small stars on sunny winter days equals snow is coming. Crystals at the bottom equals frost. Cloudy liquid with small, small stars equals thunderstorms. Clear liquid equals clear bright weather. Workings. A storm glass works on the principle that temperature and pressure affect solubility, sometimes resulting in clear liquid, other times causing precipitants to form. The liquid within the glass is a mixture of several ingredients, most commonly distilled water, ethanol, potassium nitrate, ammonium chloride and camphor. 
The method by which the storm glass works is not fully understood. Explanations include changes in barometric pressure, changes in temperature, and the effects of electricity across the glass. How's that for woo? If we construct the boys' book of science and construction, in the meteorology section, how to make a chemical weather glass. To make enough solution for a five inch long test tube, five eighths of an inch in diameter, claims the solution should not cost over 25 cents if you supply your own bottle, consists of two ounces of water, two ounces of alcohol, that's absolute, no water in the alcohol, half a dram of ammonium chloride, half a dram of potassium nitrate, two drams of camphor. Uh, all these substances are common chemicals, not expensive. You are probably familiar with camphor and know what it is. Absolute alcohol is alcohol which is perfectly free from water. Ammonium chloride is also known as sal ammoniac, and you may possibly have used it before in making a battery. Potassium nitrate is also sometimes called saltpeter. These chemicals must be mixed in their proper proportions according to the formula given above, or the weather glass will not operate properly. The solid ingredients may not dissolve quickly. If so, they, must be, they may be assisted by shaking the bottle. When the mixture has properly dissolved, fill the test tube to within three quarters of an inch. Let's give it a shake, shall we? Add a little bit of dynamics to the display. When the mixture has properly dissolved, fill the test tube to within about three quarters of an inch from the top and close it with a cork so that no dust or dirt can get in. The tube is now ready to be mounted on the wooden back and hung up ready for use. It may, of course, be hung wherever you wish, but the best place is where it will be exposed to the north, i.e. in the southern hemisphere, to the south, so it's not in the direct sun, and in a shady place out of the direct rays of the sun. The glass should be provided with a small scale made of a strip of paper fastened to the wooden back with shellac. Draw a line on the scale about one inch and one quarter from the bottom of the tube mark at fair. Mark two other lines, one about one inch and one eighth and the other two and one quarter inches above the bottom line. Mark the middle line change and the top stormy. After the scale has been marked and is thoroughly dried, should be given a coat of white shellac or varnish to protect it from the weather. The appearance of the liquid will change when the weather is going to change. On some days it will be clear, on others somewhat milky, and then again on other days full of snow-like crystals. Here are what the various indications mean. Clear liquid, fair weather. Crystals near bottom. Fair weather with humid air in summer and frost, heavy frost in winter. Dim liquid, storm. Crystals rising in tube and approaching point marked change. A change in the weather, probably a storm. Tube full of crystals, storm. Crystals sinking in tube and passing point marked change. A change in the weather, probably clear. Of course, you will wonder how the weather causes the appearance of the liquid in the tube to change. The reason is very simple. Suppose you mix some ordinary salt with water. The first salt will dissolve, but if you keep on adding more to the water, the point will soon be reached at which no more salt will dissolve. The solution is then said to be saturated. If you warm the solution so that it becomes slightly hot, you can add more salt and it will dissolve. If you then let the solution cool off, the salt which dissolved and disappeared when the solution was warmed will appear again in the bottom of the liquid in the form of large crystals. This shows that a solution which is warm will dissolve more salt than one which is cold. Another peculiar fact about solutions is that certain ones will absorb water from the atmosphere on a damp day and evaporate slightly on a dry day. The solution in the chemical weather glass is very critical. That is, very slight changes in temperature, in the amount of moisture in the air, etc., affect the amount of chemical salts. Potassium nitrate and ammonium chloride are salts, which the liquid can hold in solution. And on some days, the liquid will consequently be clear and on others full of crystals, depending upon the weather. So that's the official story. And the reason why I'm thinking that this is pretty much pure woo is that it's in a sealed glass tube. The only way you're ever going to get any barometric pressure effects is if this slightly hollow domed bottom 
is able to flex to reflect ambient barometric pressure. And there's the other thing. Here we are, 1,111 metres above mean sea level. So the barometric pressure here is going to be completely way off for Admiral Fitzroy's theories on storm prediction and formulating a particularly critical or supercritical solution that's going to be good at reflecting barometric conditions at the coast. So all these things capable of doing, in my opinion, is reflecting temperature change. So it's a really, really, really clumsy thermometer, I think. Don't know, only got the thing yesterday. It's a Christmas present. The darling Dotar child, who, as you can see, decided that the boys' book of science and construction was actually for girls. She liked the, the idea of these things so much that she bought four of them. She's got one, I've got one, my son's got one, my mother's got one. It was a Fitzroy storm glass Christmas. And I think it's woo. But, as she said, Dad, you're going to graft the living shit out of this thing. You're going to have a ball. And she's right. She is right. You know, I do get a bit obsessive. But you know what? If you don't get a little bit obsessive, and there we can see the 24 balls hanging down, so it's actually about 25 degrees, because we haven't quite reached 26, and 24 is descending. At least it was when it was in the hut. I've just brought it back outside, so it's... Oh, no, yes, it's still going down. Yeah, you've got to be a little bit obsessive if you feel like living out in the forest. As a harmless mad scientist, trying to figure out how the world works and what matters. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Hope you enjoyed that. Scientific instrument, probably woo. Ciao.